courtside here at Frost Arena. Tyler Merriam alongside Alex Arians, the third-year sophomore from Madison, Wisconsin. The Jacks a 66-53 victory today over Nebraska Kearney, but the start of this game left a little to be desired. 0 for 9 from the field. Uh, just had to get the kinks out a little bit to get things going. Yeah, it was a little start. Um, I thought we had a decent focus in walkthrough today, but uh, yeah, we just couldn't get shots to fall. Um, obviously, like you said, it was a slow start to the game. Um, just couldn't get it going. But this is something I know Eric Henderson preaches to you guys, the respect side of things, that it doesn't matter who you're playing, what the name on the uniform is of the other side, you have to respect the opposition and respect the game. Right, we know that coming in, uh, especially teams playing us, we know we're going to get everyone's best shot every night, and uh, the focus and uh, the level of uh, compete that we have needs to be there every night, or else we're going to get uh, games like this where uh, teams are a little closer than we uh, would have liked. Ten points for you in Fort Collins on Tuesday, 16 points tonight. Feel like you're starting to get fully comfortable offensively? Yeah, that's something I've been talking to the coaches with. Uh, I just need to stay aggressive. Uh, first uh, s five, seven games uh, really wasn't uh, staying aggressive on offense, looking for my shot, uh, and I think that's sort of coming to me the past couple of times, couple of games, excuse me, uh, just making sure uh, my feet are set, getting there when teammates kick out, um, being ready to shoot it, and then off the dribble, just making sure I'm staying aggressive, attacking the hoop. You knew you had a height advantage coming into this game, but you and your teammates, 15 offensive rebounds. That was a huge stat tonight. Right. Uh, like you said, uh, we couldn't get it going in the first half. They actually out-rebounded us in the first half by one, uh, so we knew that was something we had to pick up in the second half and uh, would be a big determinant in this game. And 10 turnovers, ball security. It's the unforced errors that have been issues at times. Better at that tonight. Right. At the beginning of the season, we were a little sloppy with the ball. Um, had a, a bunch of turnovers, and uh, recently we've been uh, taking better care of it. For you personally, what's this uh, this week and next week like as we're getting into finals now and trying to wrap up the uh, school year, at least for the fall semester? Yeah, uh, in the classroom, just making sure uh, we're finishing stuff up and uh, making sure that when we come back, uh, making sure we're getting good night's sleep, uh, making sure we're coming focused to practice. For you personally, what do you got for classes here? Uh... I'm actually done with all my finals. I got one more on Monday, and then I'll be done. All right, one on Monday. What's left? Geography. Geography. How are yep. we going to do? Good. Good? Yep, feeling You're good. Feeling confident? Yep. What's it like playing in Frost Arena? Oh, it's awesome, man. These fans uh, bring, give us energy. It didn't show tonight, but, uh, uh, you know, we sort of feed off them every game. Uh, it's big for us. Uh, we know that. Uh, we got one of the best home court advantages in the country. For you, having been a part of this program when Hendo was an assistant, the associate, now the head coach, what's the transition been like? Uh, it's good. Uh, obviously, me and Hendo have a good relationship. Uh, I have a lot of confidence in him, and I know he has a lot of confidence in me, and I think uh, we're finally starting to see that transition on the court. Who's the best left-handed shooter on the team? Me. Of course. No doubt. <laughs> Alex, thank you, my friend. <laughs> yep, thank you. And the head coach of the Yellow and Blue, Eric Henderson, is with us. And a 13-point win on Friday the 13th, but uh, if you're superstitious, it was uh, not exactly a lucky start. 0 for 9 from the field. Took a while to get uh, your teeth sunk into this game. Well, that's one way to put it, my friend. Um, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, ironic. The, the margin of victory was 13 on Friday the 13th. It was... Uh, yeah, kind of a unique game. There's no doubt about that. We, um, it was a tough start for us. I thought we were doing some good things. You know, 25 of our first 27 possessions, the ball touched the paint, which is something that we, you know, we stat and we monitor. And so that's something that was really positive. And normally, when that happens, the ball goes in at a little bit better clip. But uh, it was a tough start for the Rabbits. But uh, we hung in there and and um, we got some stops when we needed. And and uh, certainly glad to be on top at the end. There's no doubt. When you face a team that only has one player bigger than 6'5", there are obviously some inherent advantages. But because of the style of play you're used to playing and the teams you're used to seeing, it is an adjustment for your team as well. Yeah, there's no doubt. You have to make some adjustments, and some of the matchups are a little unique, you know, because Alex, you know, isn't really used to guarding a 6'1 dude or, or somebody that's you know, plays more on the perimeter, and, and Doug, for that matter, as well. They're both capable, but they just don't do it near as much, you know, when it comes to Summit League play or even in, the, in most of our non-conference games. So there is a little bit of an adjustment factor. Um, but, you know, as, as you know, Tyler, you know, we, we – um, we, we we look at our team a little bit differently. That we yeah, obviously we want to win every game, but we evaluate in many different ways. And and we certainly didn't didn't uh, play 
to the level that we want to play at, um, and that doesn't matter what name is on the front of the jersey. It has that needs to be irrelevant, and and so that's probably you know the thing that you take away from this game. You just there's a lot of things going on in our young guys' lives right now, but at, when when you, that ball tips, you have to be focused and you have to have that energy that that is acceptable as a jackrabbit. We were a little light on that tonight. You ended up minus one at halftime in rebounds, but you end up plus eight in the second half for the game, 15 offensive rebounds, 13 second chance points. That was a big stat for you. It might have been something that we talked about at halftime. I can't remember. It might have been, eh? <laughs> I can't remember. No, yeah, certainly, as, as you know, Tyler, we need to get stops and rebounds. And, and when we do that, our offense is, is so much more efficient. And um, that's why it was a little, just a little stale, a little stagnant in that first half. And it got a little bit better in the second half, not much, but it did get a little bit better in the second half where we were able to get a little bit better flow. And we had on a couple nice runs, but we were just never, our, our concentration level and our focus and in, in our energy level were just not um, at the level that we need to be to be, you know, you know, to have a great amount of successes. And, and when you're shy on those, the ball just doesn't go in as much because we have plenty of open shots, but that's just that's just the basketball gods getting to you a little bit too. Ten turnovers. Did you feel like you valued the basketball to the level you want tonight? It, I mean, it's trending in a better direction, you know, for us, and it has been the last couple games. Um, so we want to keep that number down, but we also still need to play fast. We still need to get easy baskets in transition, and when we have to play in the half court and slow that ball up, you know, so often – we do get stagnant a little bit, and, and, you know, we haven't shot it at a great level this year yet, so the, they're kind of packed the paint, and it gets a little stuffy in there because um, Doug and Matt have been so good for us down there. And, and so, um, yeah, the turnover number is better. There's no doubt about that. But we certainly still need to play with a little better pace. And 10, 10 is fine. 10 is fine for us. You know, honestly, even 12 or 13 is fine if, if we're getting a little bit higher sure. possessions. And that's kind of part of what tonight was a little disappointing. Still a 10, and it was a little minimal possession game. Alex Arians had 10 out at Colorado State on Tuesday. He has a, a season-high 16 tonight. Feel like he's certainly trending in the right direction offensively. We've had some good conversations with, you know, Alex and I about him being more aggressive for us, and we need him to be a part of our, our – um, just our, our, our improvement, you know, and, and he got off to a little bit slow start, but, but he's played, you know, much better the last three or four games, and I think it's his mentality. You know, he wants to be a little bit more aggressive, still plays very, very unselfish, but um, he also needs to look to score a little bit. He can affect this game in a lot of ways, and, and so we need him to continue to be that. Two games this week, Brandon Key, 12 assists, three turnovers. Yeah, Brandon's certainly coming, and, and you know, it, you, we need him to do that, you know, share the basketball, just like all of our guys. And, and Brandon's certainly capable of being one of our, you know, big-time playmakers. And, and um, you know, when the ball's in his hand, I feel pretty good about it. But the shooting numbers leave a little bit to be desired, 5 of 22 from 3. And you even asked me during the game, 11 of 21 from the free throw line. I know that one really bugs you. Yeah, it really does. I mean, because when I look at free throws, I mean, that was just a, uh, honestly a microcosm of our night, you know, yeah. because when I look at free throws, it's all about concentration and, and, and confidence and, and just just being locked in. And, and obviously 11 for 21 is not very good. And um, I didn't think our locked in or our energy <laughs> was very good either. So it kind of goes hand in hand to, tonight. And it really makes a lot of sense, to be real frank. Well, back home for two next week as we wrap up finals week and you get Florida Gulf Coast coming in here on Wednesday. So a chance for the guys to focus on schoolwork for a little while then also get back to the hoops here at home. Yeah, no doubt. It, it's a big week for us, you know, a big, big week for all of our students here at South Dakota State. And, and it's a fun time of year. You know, it's a little stressful time of year with, uh, you know, those finals. But, but, it's, but it's, uh, it's a fun time of year too. And they need to knock those finals out and then uh, we'll be ready to go against those guys. Um, on Wednesday, and, and um, we're looking forward to getting back out on Frost Arena um, to show our fans what uh, we're certainly capable of because we, we, we're disappointed in tonight, to be real frank.